Hi, I'm Mark. I've been asked to discuss rigging your stage cylinder. By the end of this, you should be in a position to make a rigging kit for your stage cylinder. There are many rigging kits available on the market, but most are not fit for purpose because they're too generic and require some adapting. So a correctly worn stage cylinder will be streamlined and stable on your body, easy to manage, and especially when using one or more stages. When worn, your cylinder valve outlet should face up. So there's no point having your valve like that. You want it like that when it's worn. So that the valve wheel is on the outside of the body, not between the body and the cylinder. Additional kit you're gonna need, two P-clips, ideally with nice big loops at the bottom, so that when you've got gloves on, you can feel them. A couple of meters of braided line, a foot of hose pipe, garden hose is ideal, otherwise any other type of pipe will do. A Jubilee clip suitable for the cylinder you're doing. A bungee, some cable ties, and a DSMB reel with some thin line in order to pull the braided line through the hose pipe. Next stage, we need to get this braided line through the hose. It's a bit thick to go through on its own. So we've got the DSMB reel with thinner line, which will be easier as a pull line. Take the thin line and feed it through the hose pipe. Make sure there's a good bit of slack through. Then get your braided line, and what you want is one end to be about eight to nine inches longer than the other. So my hand is four inches approximately. If I put that one, two, and I've got that bit there, I'll bring the other end to match, and then I find the middle of those. Taking my thinner line, I'll feed that through. If you tie one overhand knot in the end, or half inch, it's not going to hold, it's going to undo. So tie a couple, but make sure you can undo them afterwards. And then pull it through feeding and pulling at the same time. Once you've got it through, you want about five inches sticking out at the end. Okay, now you've pulled it through, undo the knot that you put in the end, and if you didn't pull it super tight, it should relatively easily undo. Take the P-clip, which is going to be on the top, feed it through, and the easiest way to do this is overhand knot, roughly, so you end up with about four inches above the knot. Pull it as tight as you can, and you should end up with a system like that. Now you've got your knot in the end, I'm a bit finicky like this, I like the knot dress. What that means is where the knot runs through, if it's twisted over itself, just make sure it's not. It just makes the knot easier to manage and potentially undo in the future. Once you're in this position, put this loop over the valve. And ideally, what you want is the P-clip to be between the shoulder and the neck, so it's just over the crown of the cylinder. Then you're going to bring your cord all the way down to the bottom here. You're going to tie an overhand knot at this position to stop the hose sliding through. Get it as close as you can and make sure it's dressed, there's no twists or unnecessarily angles of the rope as it's tied, okay? And that should stop the hose moving up and down the line. This we should get to this stage now, okay? You want this much slack, again, with the overlap of the two ends. The next thing you want to do is on the longer length, about three fingers, you want to connect the second P-clip to the line using a lark's foot. Now, the easiest way to do a lark's foot is put a bite in the line here, put it through the loop, over the top of the clip, and back on itself, and that's a lark's foot. And you can adjust it accordingly. Okay, so again, your three fingers 
I just need to move that down a slight bit. Again, dress your knot so it's nice and neat and the lines run through. Now we got to this stage, we're going to put in a fisherman's knot here to hold everything together. Now all a fisherman's knot is, before you panic, is two overhand knots. So we're going to take the bottom longer tail, making sure it covers this one, take it round the lot, and overhand on itself. And what you're trying to get is a gap here of about a finger to two fingers width between the two knots. Then with the other tail, basically the same again, back round and through itself. So this gap here is basically where you're going to put your Jubilee clip. Tighten this knot as much as possible. Point to note, if you're struggling with knots, Henry Paisley has done a really good series on this BZAC um, site of knots. Once they're as tight as you can, you want to make them fit so they're snug together and then we're going to cut off the excess. So just cut it off. Take a lighter, making sure not to melt or damage the rest of the, the line and just seal it. Let it cool down and don't burn yourself. Now we've let the, the molten um, braiding cool down, we can put the Jubilee clip on. So if you've slackened it off well, then obviously we can slide it on over the bottom, over the um, P-clip and the braid. Now point to note on this, the end of the, um, the Jubilee clip is potentially quite sharp and will be extended. So. Using a cable tie, you can hold the excess down, or when you put the Jubilee clip onto the cylinder, you can also put cable tie underneath the Jubilee clip to tighten it once you've tightened the band. I'll demonstrate that in a second. So, put the Jubilee clip over the end, also making sure that any excess is away from the body and isn't going to stick into the side of your dry suit, because that will rip it. Feed the P-clip, Manipulate obviously the Jubilee clip if you need to, but feed the P-clip and the cordage underneath it. Making sure the Jubilee clip sits between the two knots we formed just now. Whichever stage or side of your body this stage is going to go, this is going to be a left hand one. Ideally, the rigging needs to be just slightly off centre towards the body so that the valve is slightly tilted away from the body. Just makes it for easier access when you're in the water. Again, keeping the nut on the Jubilee clip away from the body, so potentially spin it around a bit. Keeping this nice and snug and tighten it up. Once we've tightened it, our excess is around here as you can see. And if you put the cable tie underneath, like I suggested, what you can do now is pull the cable tie through itself. Nice and tight to hold that down. Using a pair of snips, just trim off the excess. And it just makes it nice and neater. So that side is away from your body and your dry suit. You now have a rigged stage. Now if this is too long for you, which some people it may be, 
you can shorten it by putting it through itself like so and then you have it shorter and closer and that's it we've rigged our stage perfect we've got this bit of bungee or inner tube you can use elastic just tie it up doesn't matter what we do with this is we can put this over the stage like so so when our regs is on here they can be tucked away now if you're restoring regs underwater the aim of this handle okay you can pull it to lift your bungee and therefore it gives you access to put your regs and hoses underneath it's called a handle but it's probably best not to lift it because it could loosen off the, the rigging personally i recommend taking um, the rigging off after each dive trip and cleaning the stage cylinder however if you want to leave it on there permanently you could put a piece of this underneath the bungee uh, sorry, under the bungee underneath the jubilee clip before you tighten it up i hope you found this useful and it's furthered your knowledge on stages i'd recommend looking at the bezac advanced decompression procedures course next which will help you be able to use stages safely in the water thanks